Groove Henge. Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Viewers Comments and Questions Live. Dan here. Vic here, hello. Hello, says Michael. I've made a really interesting discovery this Is week. Is it he you're looking for? <laughs> Hello everyone, welcome to Viewer Comments and Questions. Hi uh, Jazz Cord. Uh, what's up, TPS Massive? What's your discovery, Dan? Um, I discovered that the height of these, mag the little screw things here, on PAF type, like the the real ones, a quarter of a millimeter, that makes all the makes difference in the world. Difference. And also, getting the getting these pickups level, parallel to the string. Yeah. Uh, I just for those of you requiring some context at this point, Dan acquired this 1962 Gibson Les Paul in brackets SG, uh, and has decided that the bridge pickup just needs throwing in the bin. I had decided. <laughs> it was a bit weak, so you've been messing with pickup heights? I have. Just changing the height, and I got it up really high, and it sounded ace, but it was so bright. And so I lowered these screws here on the, this treble side, and it got it all balanced and everything. It suddenly just went, oh, and I've, I've had the most fun this weekend. It's been amazing. <laughs> Who knew, kids? Adjusting your pickup heights and pole pieces makes a difference. I've got a telly. I just go, eh, eh, it's just there, and yeah, you know, I haven't had to worry about those sorts of things. Yeah. But I, I don't know if it's because there's so much uh, harmonic stuff going on with this guitar that all, all of those little things make a massive difference. Let us know if you concur and what your experiments have been. By the way, if anyone's getting a click track in their ears, can you let us know? Because. Uh... I think I turned it off. Um, yeah. Thanks to BV for moderator realizing. Thank you, BV. And being here for us week in, week out. Um, uh, I believe I've got to turn the super chats off already because we're full. With apologies. That's so flop. if you've super chatted to this point, we will answer. If you haven't, better look next time, Buckle. Um, we will we'll, we'll come again, hopefully, if I can navigate to the correct page. For those of you who are new, uh, we do this. We try and do this every Monday. It is some um, open question and answer session. We prioritise super chats. Thank you to everyone who does. And sometimes we delve into the regular chat as well. Uh, yeah. Anyone on, Dan? Ah, oh, man, just yeah, loads. Loads, how lovely. Uh, yeah. Uh, so who we've got? We've got Tolstergen. Hello, Mick and Dan. Greetings from Norway. I love Norway. I had a great gig there. And uh, beautiful people. And the fjords. <laughs> so beautiful. Pining for the fjords. Pining for the fjords. I went to an instrument building academy in Norway once. That was really good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dave Johnson. Dave from another part of Nova Scotia saying hello. Tim Chalmers. Hello, Tim. Nice to hear from you as always. Here's Rosie. Hello, the, dog. The 13th Dukey born. So it's evening down and Mick. That's a fast Jeff show. Tate says, happy birthday, Mick. Thanks, Jeff. Mick, uh, it was his birthday last Friday. A week ago a week on Friday. Ago. Hello, Wit Anderson. Hello, Dan Sokolowski. Uh, nobody Snow Music. Octopus Ears. Hello. Lefty O Bass is on. Music Therapy Laz. Jeremiah oh, McCann has confirmed that there's no click track. Wonderful. Which is good because sticking to it would be tough for us. Jim B. Hey from Akron, Ohio. How lovely. <laughs> um, Ed is on. Hi, Ed. Uh, Ed. Ed Air Fire. He says, Good evening from Cloudy Stoke. Brian um, Barrett is on. He says, Good Monday, gents. Listening from my own private Idaho. How lovely. I saw Brian Barrett's name, and I, and because of dyslexia, I saw Brett Gossett. 
Right. And I thought, I love it. Brett. He's amazing. I'd, I'd love to interview him. I Next time I go to Australia, I'm going to try and hook it up. Uh, you'll have to fill me in, mate. Sorry. Brett Garsett. Brett Garsett was, uh, so he played guitar for John Farnham. Oh, looks like we've got a bit of slow internet going. Oh, heavens. And um, and I saw him play this, this, there was a solo called um, Get Me Out. And there's a, there was a wicked solo on it. I saw him play it live. It was just mind-blowing. An incredible guitar player. And then he went to LA and he played for, did some stuff in LA. Like, he's just, just awesome. And anyway, I just thought it'd be really, I saw his name there and I thought, amazing slide player as well. Okay. Really beautiful melodic slide player. Um, yes, Robert Lorenz. Hello from Buffalo, New York. Do you have the video playing at the moment by any chance, Dan? And if you do, I don't have any video playing. Uh, just keep the people interested. Okay. Interested for a moment, can you? Okay, I, I'll, I'll certainly do what I can. Um, yeah. So, ah, uh, I'm getting. Um, yeah, who else we got on? Sorry, my my thing is now kicked me out as well, which is brilliant. Yeah, so anyway, um, we're going to, we have a very interesting week planned. Uh, BV has confirmed there is some buffering happening. Uh, we're, we're checking it, BV. Uh, yes, very, very interesting week planned. We're doing a mega show tomorrow, which we can't unfortunately tell you much about. But then on Wednesday, Nick and I are taking a little trip up to Neve. And we're going to go and have a play with some Neve stuff and record some guitars. So that will be really, really fun. And assuming where it says full, that we are buffering severely. Yeah. But I will keep on while Nick's trying to get this sorted out. Uh, um, still full. I'm waiting for an ant to come flying across the room and smash into the, into the server. Um, yes, we are we're doing what we can, people. We're doing what we can. The joys of living on a farm. Living on a box. Okay. So, yeah, we're going to head up to... Neve and we're going to try some stuff out. We've got a couple of Neve bits and pieces here, and it's it's amazing. And they've got a really lovely place up north. So we thought we'd head up there and and see if they can show us the best way to mic up an amp and get some some great uh, great tones. CS says Dan, can you tell us the story about Red your telly? I certainly can. Okay. So, I arrived in the UK in 2002 and started playing. Um, the day I arrived, I had a gig at a walkabout pub. And so that was, you know, for years, that was, you know, how I made money, just, just doing gigs. And then I really wanted, I'd had a telly for a couple of years at that point, and I really wanted a nice tally, but I didn't have a lot of money. Scraped together all I could, and then a friend of mine, Simon Law, who knew everyone, and this is before Simon was making guitars, I asked Simon if he could help me find a good Telecaster. And then a couple of weeks later, he gave me a call. He said, um, there was a shop in America that a friend of his said they had a, a really nice tally. So I said, yep, great, agreed a price, and, and um, it eventually made its way to the UK. And it was really interesting. I picked it up out of the case, and it was a what they call new old stock. So it would look like a brand new guitar. So all the wear on this is real. It's all from... <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! You, you, you may have uh, you may have enjoyed some extra outage there. 
Oh boy. Oh boy. <sighs> if if anyone is still here, let's get on with the super chats and we are very sorry. Um and my friend says, and we're back. Yes, we are. Great. Michael says hi from Mexico. Hi to Mexico. Hi Aiden Williams to says Mex thoughts on Dune 2. Before we get stuck in, have you seen that yet? No. Ah. I want to watch Dune 1 first. Okay, but you need to go and see it at the cinema. The, the sound design is they're going to win every award in the world and they're going to make up some awards just so they can give them more awards. Oh, for cool. the sound design. It's unbelievable. It's not an option going to the cinema, I'm afraid. Can't do it. Why? Dog. Okay. So, I... I'll come over and look after the I dog. I just can't do it. I'll come over and look after the dog. Maybe we'll... And Catherine can go to the cinema. Okay. And watch it. All right. All right? Um, do it tonight. I'll look after Rosie tonight. You and no, Catherine go to the cinema. No, we have too much planning to do. We do have planning to do. We have too much planning to do. Okay, right. We're, we're after a shaky start, let us start rampaging through the uh, the super chats tonight. First in tonight, Steve Mass. Hello, Steve. Hello, mate. Great to hear from you, buddy. He says, uh, Mick, you said you prefer a higher action on your guitars. Do you use a fairly light touch with your fretting hand to avoid pushing notes sharp? I don't know if I'm revising my whole deal with all of this. In the days when I was a Stevie Ray devotee and just wanted to smack the crap out of the guitar all the time, it's not really possible to do that with a low action. Or, or That's not true. I found it extremely hard to do with a low action. So also playing strats with a seven and a quarter fingerboard radius does mean that quite often you want that action up a bit. Secondly, I like slightly bigger frets. Mm. So the higher action, even though it's measured off the top of the fret, can be a little bit of a... Misnomer? Yeah, it can be a little bit of a red herring because the frets are bigger and you don't have to push down quite so far. It's also got a great deal to do with the relief in the neck. I used to like quite a lot of relief in the neck. I'm sort of growing out of that as well. So now I don't I don't love the high action anymore, but then when people come into TPS, they pick up mine and Dan's guitars and they're like, wow, you guys like high action. So yeah, I don't know. You know, it's nothing compared to Josh Smith's action or a lot of other pro guitar players I know. But um, the, the point about left hand pressure and pulling notes sharp, that's a matter of your individual intonation, yeah. regardless of... of how the guitar is set up and funnily enough um, coming up in it'll either be this friday or next friday is a show we did with a, a guy named adam levy uh, and adam played two of my guitars both of which are quite hard to keep in tune uh, like yeah because what what he does playing the guitar is to play it in tune <laughs> which is all about exactly what you're talking about with left hand pressure mm -hmm. It's just something that comes so naturally to him that the thing is sonorous and in tune and the way he's affecting on the guitar makes it in tune. Yeah. So, But uh, the, the general uh, premise of your question, I think, is right. If you've got a really high action, you do have to bend them further uh, down to the strings. Yeah. When um, we were at your house and a uh, mate was staying over... Andy? Uh, um, no. No. Jack? No. Strat. 70s. Ainsley. Ainsley was staying over. And Ainsley had bought a couple of new, well, he'd bought some, acquired some more 70s Strats. <laughs> I think one of which we ended up with, or you ended up with. And I picked up one of his guitars and I thought, man, the action on this is really high. This is going to suck. And it was, I immediately came in here and raised all the action on, on my guitars. <laughs> it's gone back some, but there's something about... So I've discovered with the a really low action, you get all this uh, ex, ex, extraneous noise that when the action is high, because it has to be such a, a definite process of fretting the note, it, it gets rid of so much stuff here that you don't want. And I, yeah, it's, if you can 
go a little bit higher in your action, it's, it's certainly worth a try. Yeah, I think it's it, it, it's all down to how you play. I mean, I know people who use a light, a low action and have no problem with string singing out and audibility. Dan and I both slightly harder hitters and a low action doesn't really allow that in the same way. Um, I do find that if my guitars are set up to play comfortably and I haven't done many gigs, the action starts creeping down a bit. The second I get on stage, I'm like, oh dear. Yeah, right. I can't deal with this. It needs The thing needs to fight a bit more. Um, that's the subject that comes up. Dan and I both like guitars that fight back a bit, which is by way of massive tangent on question one, is one of the reasons why we're not massive, massive fans of modern perfect guitars like your Sirs and your Andersons and your Collingses and stuff, even though I do love Collings. And Collings not quite in the same category, but like a modern perfect rock guitar is just too easy. Yeah. It's t yeah. Wrong. Wrong. It's not as hard as the guitars that we're used to, therefore feels alien. So it's all about context. Yeah. And that bit of a fight is the character of the guitar. That's for me, like, it is. Yeah, yeah, totally. But for a lot of people, if you've never got used to that, you pick up a a clunky old thing and you think man this is impossible to play and so it's really about context yep. and individual player yep. sorry uh, spent far too long on that i hope that answered your question steve um michael Giliberto is on hi michael G'day, mate. he says hi tps fam uh no i've got no question today but a crazy tube circuit superconductor is due to arrive please take a question from the good folks in the chat you'll love the superconductor it's a it's an astonishing pedal yeah yeah um, it does work. It really is. It's amazing, isn't a it? A good, uh, yeah. a good Swiss Army knife of boosts, I would say. Yeah. Um, just trying to find uh, a question. It's a question from Neil Pike. This is when is the Robin Ford show dropping? So we'll be filming with Robin next Tuesday. Um, so then sometime after that, and it promises to be really, really interesting. He's, I've had to do a rebuild of his rig again. He's asked for some more stuff to go on there. We've, I was in London, and he wanted to try a few things out. <laughs> so we tried out um, an octave fuzz, a uh, what do you call it? The um, oh, man. Give me a clue. An octave the, fuzz. The, the Randy of Revenge. Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> One of those. One of those. Yeah. Oh, come on. It... A frequency analyzer. Fre no, no. I know. Yeah, but yeah. That's what it's it is. exactly what it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, yes. And ring modulator. Ring modulator. Thank you. And there's something else. And, and, and I'm like, so, you know, do you like them? And so, which one do you like? Which one would you like on your board? Oh, I want all of them. And so he's, he's, we ended up throwing a bunch of more stuff on the board. <laughs> and it's really great, actually. Um, yeah. Eagle Ray superb. Rob says, will Robin's Dumble be part of the TPS episode? Well, oh, yes. Yeah, it will be. It will be. Oh, yes. Um, well, it, 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 there's two things we want to do with him, so we're hoping to get both done. Yeah. But in some way, shape or form, the Dumble will feature. Yeah. Robin's using a, uh, another amp at the moment, and it's that's the one that I've been working up with him uh, with. You know the, the basis of all, all his board tones, and it's it's an astonishing sounding amplifier. Um, so yeah, there'll be there'll be that and some Dumble Love. I'm trying to, for the life of me, the name of that amplifier. Overdrive special. No, 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 not the Dumble. The, his, the new amp that Robin is using. Oh, um, uh, it's it'll come to me in a minute. Yeah, um, it'll be in the chat. Someone will be saying what it is. Little Walter. Little Walter. Oh man, it sounds so good. Uh, Scott Curry, next in for Super Chai this evening. He says thanks. Uh, is it better to run OD pedals near Unity Gain or Boosted a lot? On TPS demos, you seem to run the volumes a lot higher than I do. So here's the thing with overdrive pedals, and I'll try and be as quick about this as I can. And it goes back to gain staging. Think about your overdrive pedal the same way you would think about a compressor. It has a, 
it, it limits the signal, which is where the clipping comes in. Now, the thing with a clean tone is, if I play like this. Here's my clean tone. Here's my clean tone. If I play like this, there's my clean tone. Right? So I was just and trying to drag him a bit with my shuffle. <laughs> But then I turn my, put my overdrive on, and my overdrive might be loud, right? And it goes, it just like, Meh. but if I take that clean tone that I start with, and I go, the clean tone isn't limiting, and so all of a sudden you get ten times the amount of volume. And this, especially at the gig, what happens is people set up their overdrive sounds when they're rehearsing or at home, and thought, you know, okay, that. That, all that level's about right. They get to the gig and it's with, with their clean tone, and then they put the overdrive on. It's like, oh, all my sounds disappeared. And it's because at the gig, you're hitting your guitar so much harder. When you turn the overdrive on, it acts like a compressor mm. and everything just goes. Mm. So, in the real world, you end up setting your overdrive pedals louder to compensate for what happens with your clean tone when you're digging in. Yeah. Because the transient is gone. Exactly. And there's a psychoacoustic effect that happens as well. It happens with fuzzes and any overdrive sound. Because it sounds more aggressive, and in the case of a fuzz, there's a load more bass in there, but because it sounds more aggressive and arresting, and perhaps some of those frequencies that are more acutely peaking, if we like, to the human ear, 2 to 3K, let's say, 3 to 4K, somewhere in that, in that world, you immediately assume it's louder, mm. even though it's not. So when you're in the dreaded sound check and the sound engineer says, oh, give me your overdrive sound, and you step on your overdrive pedal, they're like, turn it down. If there was a dB meter, the dB meter would more often than not show a reduction because the transient isn't there. Yeah. And the point of that means is you're less audible once the band kicks in. So your overdrive pedals in a band situation, exactly everything Dan just said, do want to be set considerably louder to the point where you're thinking, wow, that's way too loud but you'd be surprised. However, at home, of course, you step on your overdrive pedal and it appears to be way beyond unity gain. If you like everything to be about the right, the right, you know, the same level, then yeah, you need to back the volume off a bit. Final thing to say, and I'm sorry if Dan covered this, they sound radically different with the get with the volume up high than they do down low. So there's a tonal consideration to be made as well. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, did you say about low, uh, uh, what your amp's doing, whether it's clean or whether well, it's well, clipping? Well, the amp is the, the amp is the other part of the story because when you as you turn the amp up, you have less headroom, so then everything changes again. So it's it's all about gain staging and understanding the dynamics that happen between this, between yeah. the overdrive and the amplifier. Which is to say that if you're using something like a Tweed Deluxe, for example, that's already overdriving quite a lot, it won't make much difference where you yeah. set that volume control in terms of volume. Yep. It will make a huge difference to the overdrive. But if you're using Twin Reverb, for example, set on three, just a minute increase in output from the overdrive pedal will send you, you know, 10 to 12 dB up, mm -hmm. which could be a problem. So Simto says, Pete Thorne says that the band usually rocks harder when you hit a drive pedal. So the extra volume <laughs> matches the rest of the band. Uh, I agree with that, but also another thing to think of, think about the parts in, in the song where you hit the overdrive pedal. You know, if you're playing something clean and nice and then the part of the song comes in that goes, Gong, generally the rest of the band is louder. So, you know, lots of things to be considered. Um, Swiss872, three questions. <laughs> Let's uh, let's let's smack through them. Then. Okay. Um, yes. No. And do you have recommendations for a low pass filter? Uh, do you mean a low pass filter? Would be my first question. Yeah. Uh, this is my low pass filter. Yeah. So for those who didn't follow that, low low <laughs> a low pass filter blocks high frequencies. So as you turn the low pass filter up, you get less high frequencies. Yeah. Yeah. High pass filter, trouble booster, low pass filter, tone on your guitar. Yeah. So if you do mean something to make it less bright, um, I guess anything with a, I don't know how many tone controls are actual low pass filters and how many are 
an EQ pedal is what you should get. Yeah. If you mean a high pass filter, and apologies for thinking that you might have got it wrong, and I might, I don't mean to say that you have got it wrong. If you mean a high pass filter, i.e. something to get rid of bass, Hudson Broadcast. That's very good. Uh, has a lovely uh, high pass filter on it. Yep. Or something like... A treble booster. A treble booster. Or... Um, An EQ pedal. Uh, Color Sound Power Boost. Yep. The, the, e, the EQ on that is so oh, yeah. powerful. Yep. Second question, uh, what about using the color box for amp mics? That's the JHS color box for amp mics. Um, we have we have tried it. Oh, I can't Years get ago. enough headroom out yeah. of it. And I don't know if it's something dumb that I'm doing. These things. Yeah. I've used them. I've tried to use them, but I can't. Even with a minus 20 pad, I still can't get it clean enough mm. with enough headroom. So I don't know if I'm doing something weird. I don't think there's anything wrong with this one because... Uh, this one does exactly the same thing. Right. So stereo. Unless I'm being dumb, I can't get it clean enough. Right. It, it overdrives immediately. Okay. So I think, from memory, I think they can take a, a higher voltage, so it might be worth trying it out. But uh, yeah, they're, yeah, they're, they're cool things. No reason why it shouldn't work. Yeah. All the spec is there. It should absolutely work. Um, but yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't stop it clipping. Jeremiah McCann says the new color box has a high headroom mode. In which case, I'm pleased to say I was probably <laughs> right. There you go. <laughs> if if they've addressed it with a high yeah, headroom mode. Most, I think the the use for that most people are using it as that um, limiting. Yeah, for that specific channel, that sound. That specific sound. For the, yeah, yeah, which is a fantastic sound. Yeah. Interestingly enough, did uh, was reeling in the years. Elliot Randall was that direct. I think so. It They've sounds definitely got that. Like I was like, what did they use yeah. for that? What are they building in there? Well, what are they building in there? He's got one of those mixing desks with an input transformer. He's cranked it up. Um, now you can hear it in Indonesia. <laughs> he once had a consulting business. Um, did you? Did you see? Um, that uh oh someone someone took that from a vcq and used it on on a, a thing some building a pedal oh really yeah yeah it's really funny <laughs> marcus marcus found the track oh nice and put it as a background music for yeah, nice for the reeves thing uh hello marcus if you're watching uh and the final question from swizz uh 872 was um what do we think about the red panda bit mixer I've just had to Google oh, it. Oh, okay. Um, I, I'm a big fan of everything Red Panda. I've got the Red Panda Tensor on my board, and I have come to realize that I simply cannot play without that thing anymore. Um, I've just tried out their ring modulator, and it's really cool. It's, it's, there's a lot going on, but I think their stuff is wonderful it's a mono line level oh just a three to one thing yeah yeah great mixer uh op amps uh goes from off to unity so you can't boost okay so, so you know. yeah, okay right looks great everything they make is great uh my as with anything like this when you split any signal and send it off into different places you just do need to be aware of hums and buzzes and all that kind of stuff but on a pedal board to maybe create some parallel. Well, when you've got three going into one, it's different when you've got one going out to three. But if you've got three inputs mixing into one. Um, oh, I see. It's three into one, is it? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a little. Do you remember the old Boss mixers they used to make? No. Um, like a really old Boss used to do a four into one oh, yeah. mixer. Connect multiple instruments to one amp, combine parallel effects change, cool, yeah. clean blender analog driver. Never tried it, Swizz, uh, but everything Red Panda makes is flipping awesome, so... Yeah. Leyland uh, Berg says, buffer issues again. No, we're good. We should be good by we're now. We're good, Leyland, so yeah. we think it's you. It's not me, it's you. <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? Oh, Michael Giliberto says uh, it's buffering as well. Yeah, we're... we're, we're no, we look good. We're, our, our vital statistics are all... Clear. Good. I don't know if they'd get us on the cover of Sports Illustrated, but they might. 
at least get a low level catalog shoot. Can you even say things like that in 2024? I don't know. I don't know. Um, Carry on. Yeah. Uh, Matt McGrath. Hello, Matt. He says, uh, I barred myself from buying pedals, but not amps. <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, I have the chance to buy my old late 70s Ampeg V4 back uh, from a friend. Truly the one that almost got away. Either of you had the same experience with gear? Um. Mm. 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 Yes. You saw the buffering before we did. Yeah, that's very interesting. I haven't bought, I haven't been able to buy any of my stuff back. I've, I've replaced it. I really regretted selling my old Soltech. I was, uh, I had a gig. I just finished touring with an artist in Australia and I was offered a gig overseas and I thought, right, I'm just going to sell everything and jump on a plane and sold my Softec head, which was so stupid because it sounded so great. And then I told that story to Josh and he gave me one of his Softec heads. So, but you know, I have, that's the only piece of gear that I've ever sort of got back. Uh, don't think I've ever bought anything back. Uh, what would you buy back? The Sovtec, if you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mine would be an amp too. It would be my old Mark III Mesa Boogie, which was in a hardwood cab with the wicker front. And I even know who owns it, I think. It's a guy called Bruce Sword, who's in a band called Mates with... Gavin Harrison's the drummer, maybe. Oh, uh, Pineapple Thief. Yes. Right. Yeah, who turns out I went to Yeovil College with. No way. Yeah, yeah. Adrian, his name is. Sorry, we called him Bruce. His name is actually Adrian. Apologies for the confusion. And I think he's still got it. So, uh, Bruce, if you're watching this and you want to sell it for a really low price, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to reacquire that amp one day. Got that when I was 16. Wow. And a bit. I doubt we might be off the air again. Sorry, we are heavily buffering again. Um, we'll, uh, we will plough on. on. We will plough on. Oh, I don't think we are going to be ploughing on. Things that I, I don't understand. Yes, yes, yes. Buffering, 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 buffering. Island Bose has perhaps reduced resolution to 720. I don't know if that's even an option for I'm us. not even sure we can do that in the middle of a thing. No. It's definitely a problem with the transmission rather than... Because it's going from all to nothing, so I don't think that's going to make any difference. Or it's going to make minimal difference anyway. Um, we'll, we'll carry on. Uh, hopefully you might still have audio, and if not, the podcast will be saved. And we'll make a decision on this if it doesn't come back down again. Um, oh, God, that's so annoying. It's so annoying. The revolution will not be broadcast on the internet. It won't, because it won't work. It is hilarious. It is hilarious. Lots of people commenting on the Ampeg thing. So there was a, a guitar player uh, years ago. His name escapes me for the moment. A guy in Australia. And I heard him play, and it's like, and he had the most amazing guitar sound and I couldn't work out what the amp was. And I asked him after the show and he said, I would love to explore some of those old Ampeg tones because they, they really have a sound, a voice of their own. They don't sound like anything else. They're very, very cool. Yeah, I've never had one. Okay, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we've obviously lost the internet. Um, we're going to stop this. And then we're going to make sure the Super Chats don't disappear because I'm not going to get rid of the show. We will record a separate show answering the question and we will put it out as a separate video with massive apologies to everyone once again for our shit internet. It's driven, it's driven Mick to profanity. That's the level. Yeah, there's no reason for it. It's frustrating. It's like here where we are, it's like if it's too sunny, it doesn't work. If it's too cloudy, it doesn't work. If a cloud's in the wrong location, if it's too windy, it's, it's, it's frustrating. 
the problem with an intermittent problem is you can't track it down. No, that's right. Because I don't know if it's that if it's the switcher box at the back which I replaced. Right. But how do you know? How do you know? Okay. Um, this will be continued in a podcast.